Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold, fundamental and technical analysis for the week starting the 17th of September. So getting into uh, this week's uh, news and so it says this is from tradingeconomics.com, uh, the financial landscape will be heavily influenced by the Federal Reserve's interest rate decision on Wednesday. Additionally, in the United States, all eyes will be on the release of the S&P Global PMI figures. Uh, that's important for GDP and whether the um, the economy is uh, contracting or holding up better than expected. Furthermore, central banks in the United Kingdom, Japan and Switzerland will be deliberating on their monetary policy direction. So um, pretty much they are going to be announcing whether they'll be hiking, holding or cutting. The expectation for the United, um, United Kingdom is that they're going to high rates. Um, Japan is going to be a holding rates and Switzerland apparently it's going to be a hike but I don't think they will but they could do but um, there's reasons why they why they might not in terms of they've reached their 2% target um, inflation target um, and GDP also contracted uh, last week as well so they may not uh, hike but um, the consensus is that they uh, they probably might one more time uh, and they will be deliberating yes on a monetary policy direction investors will also closely monitor inflation rates in the UK Canada and Japan along with flash services and manufacturing PMI data for Germany the UK the euro area Japan and Australia so plenty of um, additional uh, well, news to come out uh, and that should um, you know, create some uh, some volatility this week. And if you are uh, interested in joining the Forex Mentoring Discord group that I run, it opens on the 4th of October. Um, so go to trading180.com if you want to find out more. And um, if you want to learn about fundamental analysis, stop hunt, supply and demand, uh, capture pain relief, and uh, pretty much be mentored by me, um, then go to trading180.com to find out a bit more information. Now, now, going on to the charts and some um, some more fundamentals and technicals, I guess, on the dollar index. And the dollar has been, uh, you know, pretty much rallying to the upside last week. I was looking for, uh, say I was, but um, expecting maybe a price to, you know, pull back a little bit further as to, you know, some confluence for a buy opportunity. But, um, but yeah, prices didn't pull back, but it created another higher, higher, higher low. And so the next demand zone, uh, if you if you are looking for any kind of confluence on with the dollar and the dollar index is going to be uh, right around here. So any kind of pullback from uh, this zone, from prices where we are, if prices pull back into that area there, and you want to also look for some long trades, or long dollar trades as well, in that area on a currency pair that you're interested in trading then that is pretty much what you're looking for in terms of confluence so i think that's nice also as well if you do get a pullback into any of these zones uh, as well now my bias is actually long dollars um, been long dollars for a little bit and uh, although the federal reserve are expected to hold in september uh, there was talk about a hike in November and of course that is data dependent and also as well higher for longer rates is supporting the um, the uh, the US dollar so uh, here this week or last week we had US core CPI picks up keeping another Fed hike in play this year so underlying inflation quickened for the first time in six months overall consumer prices jumped in August on higher gas costs so um it says here underlying u.s inflation ran at a faster than expected monthly pace in august leaving the door open for additional interest rate hikes from the federal reserve and so um obviously a central bank's mandate is to get inflation down to the two percent target and if inflation is you know moving away from that two percent target and moving higher then it increases the chances of a central bank looking to hike so um when looking at the uh, the dollar, um, the higher for longer narrative, or you know the potential for a rate hike in November, with, is probably likely to support the dollar for now. Um, so pretty much any pullbacks to these demand zones is where you're looking. Well, I'm looking anyway at um, at at, at uh, 
for compliments in terms of buying the uh, the dollar. So DXY for me is um, is a buy. The dollar overall is a buy. Uh, dollar yen and uh, the Federal Reserve are holding in again in September, of course, as we know. Um, but the Bank of Japan also have their uh, interest rate decision this week, and the expectation is actually for a. Um, for a, uh, a holding rates, right? But what we've been talking about over the last uh, few weeks and months is that the higher prices go on this dollar yen is the more that the Bank of Japan is likely to intervene because pretty much the the uh, yen is really um, uh, undervalued or, or, or cheap and um, the Bank of Japan don't really want the... Um, the yen to 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 to, to devalue um, that much. And last year, when we did have uh, the intervention, we had it twice. It was once around the one four freeze one four four area, and then we had one at the one four uh, one five twos is when you know the, the the last one was. And so we get into that intervention zone. And so um, uh, we had Ueda, who is the Bank of Japan governor. Um, come out and pretty much he made a statement last week Sunday which the market determined as being um, a bit hawkish as he's been very dovish but uh, the headline is that Bank of Japan watchers bring forward rate hike forecasts on Ueda's remarks and so Bank of Japan watchers move forward their forecast for an end uh, to negative interest rates after Governor uh, Kazuo Ueda touched on the possibility of an interview published over the weekend. So all 46 economists surveyed by Bloomberg over the past week said Bank of Japan will stand pat on policy next week, uh, next week's board meeting with half expecting authorities to abandon the sub-zero rate by the end of June. So there's the potential for um, an end in interest rates um, or negative interest rates or at least, at least yield curve control potentially this year depending on how high inflation and how sticky inflation um, is this year the data has to support that narrative it says here that there's a chance of an early policy shift uh, Mr. Hiroshi Namioka, uh, Chief Strategist at TD Asset Management Co. Every policy meeting has become live since Ueda took the helm. So um, my bias is to buy the yen. I understand the risks involved in buying the yen at the moment because fundamentally, um, and from a central bank perspective, there's such thing as the um, carry trade where traders will buy the uh, lower yielding currency, borrow it, and invest in a higher yielding currency. So at the moment, the yen is the lowest yielding currency at negative interest rates. And so, you know, that that pretty much um, is, a, uh, uh, is a way that uh, obviously investors can make money in buying and in, in investing in other currencies like the you know high yielding currencies like the dollar and basically make the difference between the two um, interest rates but if that starts to come to an end where the central bank are on a hiking cycle the bank of japan then or potentially looking then traders are going to position themselves really to start to buy the uh, the yen so i'm looking to buy the yen uh, it's going to be tricky against uh, the dollar but the yen against some other currencies i am um i'm looking at but if you get up to these 148s 149s expect some sort of intervention to take place which could push the uh, the yen, uh, the dollar yen and all currencies pretty much maybe down to these 143s 142s in the short term so uh, that's where i am on the dollar yen dollar swiss uh got a long bias on this and so the swiss national bank they say one more hike is expected the consensus but um i i, I don't know whether they're going to hike i don't think they will um, and even if they do, um, I think they're definitely at the end of their hiking cycle, like most central banks are, to be fair. So, um, so yeah, any pullbacks, we're waiting for a pullback to get involved in this, on this currency. So any pullbacks into probably uh, my preferred zone would be down at the 8850s, somewhere around here to get long. Of 
course, you can look for long trades here. It's a bit on the expensive side for me, but um, I think any pullbacks into this zone here or down into the 8770s, I think is going to be a really nice uh, buy in, that, in those demand zones. Uh, dollar CAD in the dollar CAD, the Canadian dollar, in fact. Um, I think is likely to uh, strengthen at least in the short term and um, but I'm not looking to buy the Canadian dollar against the US dollar something cheaper like maybe the euro CAD or or even the CAD Swiss so um, yeah I think any pullbacks could be buying opportunities but for me I'm not really looking to trade this pair I think there are better pairs to buy the Canadian dollar uh, against and also as well by the US dollar again so if you do but if you do want to get long I think that is a really nice zone to get long um, and if you are looking at short trades uh, I think this supply zone right here is okay as well let me just change that to supply and uh, yeah so any pullbacks into this zone I think are decent um, especially up at the 137 the absolute highs I think is 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 all right many traders will recognize that um, who was in the group as a um, as a CPR zone matter of fact up, up at these highs so um, decent trading opportunities on that uh, dollar CAD but fundamentally um, I'm not really keen on it looking for bigger divergences New Zealand dollar US dollar um, yeah the path of these resistances can still continues to be to the downside we didn't get quite a pullback into the um, into this supply zone but I did uh, get in on a bit of a stop hunt around this area on an intraday trade uh, which is now profitable so um, if I do get another pullback up into these zones for me I'm just looking for short trades there could be a decent pullback of course on the dollar in the US dollar simply because of uh, the announcement on uh, Wednesday if you know Jerome Powell is maybe a bit dovish then um, or the market interprets him as being a bit dovish or the data doesn't support you know further rate hikes then um, we could see the dollar start to sell off a little bit but I think that's just really it's going to be short-lived I think there's going to be definitely pullbacks into uh, these zones right here is what I'm looking for so there and then there as well in these these supply zone areas where we've got some support and resistance. Um, looking at the pound dollar, and I now am uh, short, and I've been short on the looking for uh, shorts on the pound dollar over the past week. But um, I think a pullback into this supply zone is going to be uh, nice. Uh, yes, the Bank of England are expected to hike one more time. But the tide is turning, right? So Bank of England turning gloomier on UK outlook brings rate pause into view. So central bank watchers see a change in tone since last summer. Investors anticipate just one more hike next week in the cycle. So as the UK UK's economic outlook gets cloudier, Bank of England policymakers are suddenly speaking more clearly about the choice before them. And so... Um, Andrew Bailey, who is the governor of the Bank of England, uh, was quite dovish last week in terms of his assessment on um, on interest rates and inflation. And so um, I think that the um, and also as well, there was um, there was uh, GDP came out, which was worse than expected as well. So I really should have brought up that news article. One second. One sec. Right, here it is. So, sharp decline in UK economy in July revives recession risk. And so there was wet weather and strikes held back activity across services. Figures add to darkening mood for the second half of the year. And so when you have, and I was going to talk about this when I got to the euro, but I guess I can talk about it um, uh, with the pound because... Uh, it's the same kind of scenario, but I think the I think Europe is probably in a in, in a worse position. When you have rate hikes, so many of you this week who would have got long on the euro based on a rate hike, probably left scratching your head and thinking, why is it that they hiked rates but prices went to the downside? Now, um, after this video, I'm going to post or, or, or there's going to be a video from a private mentoring group and I have my private mentoring groups on every Wednesday. And um, I'm going to talk about in that video why um, rate hikes aren't always um, appreciative of a currency. And so 
the reason why uh, uh, the euro went down and why the pound is probably could be likely to go, you know, depreciate and devalue as well, is that a is because you have um, uh, 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 stagflation fears, right? So stagflation. So what is stagflation, right? Stag, and I'm not gonna write out, but basically inflation, stagflation, and stagflation is when you have a growing economy, but um, sorry, uh, a growing inflation, right? So rising inflation or sticky inflation, and you have a shrinking economy, yeah? And so um, that environment doesn't bode well for central banks. In fact, it can be um, very negative for uh, for a currency. So that's one thing. And B as well is that um, the rate hike is more than likely priced in already, right? So um, when looking at, you know, uh, buying the rumor, sell the fact. Um, a lot of traders will wait until the day. So they will say, oh yeah, you know what? I'll wait until, you know, the day that they release uh, the rate hike, but that's already been priced into the market. And so um, when I say priced in, I mean that the um, the market typically uh, has a bit of an auction or a range where they think the value will be of a currency uh, by the time um, the news is released, right? Because everyone's got a different different expectation of value. And so it doesn't mean that because, you know, by the time we get down here, that's basically meaning that that's what is priced in. It's going to be that at that level and stay at that level. It just means that the overall um, value of the, the, the pound that the market is, you know, um, uh, uh, thinking that it's it's worth and the exchange rate is likely to be priced in in terms of a range in terms of an auction and so um, the pound might basically fall yeah but you what you what you're probably likely to see is not necessarily against the dollar because it depends but against some other currencies where you, instead of pricing prices might fall a bit more but then it will eventually um, uh, establish some sort of auction right uh, and then some sort of range and so um, I think that that's pretty much where the, the, the current um, pound is priced into the market so um, yeah I think for me any pullbacks into uh, a zone in the uh, in the uh, for, for the uh, supply for that supply zone is for me a buying opportunity uh, and I say a buying opportunity for the uh, dollar, so a shorting opportunity on this pair, because I think that the uh, market is really um, uh, fearing that the US, uh, sorry, the UK economy can't really, or in a sticky situation with stagflation. And I do think that we're going to uh, see the pound um, not necessarily sell off massively. Don't know whether it would be massively. Um, there are forecasts for actually maybe 120s, 119s. Um, over the medium to short term or by the end of the year. But uh, I do think that any pullbacks and any positive um, price action or uh, appreciative price action on the pound is likely to be short lived. So it's either going to come up to here or come up to here. And if it does, then I'm going to look for some you know, some short trades on the, uh, on the pound dollar. Uh, pound yen, again, I do think there is some sort of intervention potentially. Uh, and there's the pound is no longer the currency that is looking like an absolute buy. I'm going to delete that demand zone. I do think that there should be a bit of a pullback um, back into one of these zones. And I'm looking for a short trade. Hopefully, the waiter of the Bank of Japan is a bit more hawkish. And if he is, then this should want to sell off either at this area here or you're looking at a pullback up into that zone there and then uh, uh, to the downside. So that's where I'm thinking I want to get uh, short on this currency pair. Uh, the Euro dollar, so again, a lot of traders would have gone long Euro dollars this week um, in the group, in fact. Um, in fact, I'll just uh, find the, uh, the group uh, uh, comment that I made before the announcement. So here we have um, a comment that I made at uh, one uh, twelve before the announcement. And I'll just kind of zoom in on this 
make this a bit bigger this is in the uh, discord group and i said hi everyone i think the euro is in a lose-lose situation even if they hike today it seems like the consensus is that the rally will be short-lived short-lived is a subjective term but ultimately the euro isn't a buy medium to long term the key for any sustained rally is the speed is if the speech is hawkish and if the market believes the ecb's hawkishness have a look at the scenario chart um to get an idea of what uh, could play out and all also, if uh, what is likely to happen, 109 seems to be the peak uh, for an EU rally. So um, pretty much a lot of banks were talking about the um, the euro basically maybe rallying on a um, on a uh, on a rate hike. But either way, you know, my bias was regardless to get short. And, you know, the, the main reason was because um, you know, we could pretty much see that the euro wasn't doing um, wasn't doing uh, great in terms of their economy. I've uh, been saying it for the past uh, few weeks, maybe about a month or so. And it says here that the euro, one of the articles is, is that the euro is set for record run of losses as ECB seen done raising rates. So uh, currency falls for a ninth week as markets price no more hikes. Hedge funds turned bearish while analysts lower forecasts. And so um, it says here that traders have been ditching the euro over the past two months on bets the ECB will struggle to tighten monetary policy further amid signs of a worsening economy. Uh, that view got a boost this week when President Christine Lagarde delivered a tenth hike and signaled that the peak in rates had been reached. So pretty much um, the narrative now is changing uh, uh, from interest rate hikes to now if the um, the economy can avoid a recession. Also as well, uh, I think it was last week, the euro um, economy was downgraded. I think the uh, quarter on quarter growth was downgraded um, and it's basically barely flatlined. And so um, the euro at the moment is not doing well. And that's the reason why you're seeing uh, this move uh, to the downside. And whereas the, uh, the the US, in fact, has been surprising to the upside when everyone thought that the uh, dollar was and the US economy was going to go into a recession, they've actually been, um, uh, like I said, uh, labor's been robust and the data has, has showed um, being quite positive. So I think for me, any pullbacks into um, any one of these supply zones is going to be the uh, where I'm looking at uh, taking some trades. So any pullbacks into that area there or that area up, up above there. So the 107s, 107s, 50s up to the 108s um, is going to be a really nice area to look for. Uh, some short trades. So again, just like the pound, um, the uh, the ECB economy is struggling. The uh, hike had been priced in. Also, as well, with so many people going long, as well here, um, right in that candlestick there, low trades went long. There was lots of liquidity to the downside, right? And basically, that's what happened. A lot of traders got taken out going long and maybe are caught in their position. So a really good trade idea, and I call this a, a new CPR, is when traders are caught going the wrong side of the market, any pullbacks into this zone, I think are gonna be really, really nice for a short trade. So anywhere from this, um, this 107.21 up to probably this 107.40 uh, area, I think is gonna be very, very, very nice for a short trade and it's basically where I'm looking to get involved in that trade. Of course, this is not a, you know any kind of a financial advice, but um, yeah, just telling you what I'm doing on that one. Uh, Euro yen, I'll be, I'm looking at the same kind of trade on the Euro yen, this demand zone is holding up. There's a bit of a stop hunt here um, below that area. And, um, but I do think if the, uh, the euro being a bit more dovish and holding rates, expected to hold rates, um, and the Japanese yen potentially looking to hike rates by the end of the year. My bias is to the short side now, so I do think I want to get short, and if I'm getting short, it'd be somewhere around uh, here. It's going to be the first area on a supply and demand zone. Uh, perspective that I'm looking for. If you do want to get long, um, you could look for longs right now, but I, you know, I pretty look for. 
uh, any uh, fresher zone of demand as this level has been touched several times and is likely to potentially break. But again, it's the, it does depend upon um, what happens with uh, the Bank of Japan's uh, statement and whether they're a bit more hawkish. If, if they remain dovish, then you're probably likely to see prices move a bit more to the upside. Um, EC um, Euro pounds not looking to take this uh, this pair. Both currencies are um, pretty much in the same boat, although I do think that the pound has the slight edge. Um, so moving if you are looking to uh, take a uh, trade the prices move up to these areas here i think that's decent um don't know why you'd want to buy the euro against the pound to be fair but um that's where we are i think i'd rather buy the uh by the pound which basically means to short this currency pair up into these areas if you get the opportunity but again i'm not looking to take that pair at all it's not really on my uh, on my list aussie uh, dollar I think the Aussie dollar is still continues to be a sell I do think that this is slightly obviously expensive but um, I think any pullbacks up into uh, this zone here I think it's going to be really nice and even further higher would be a better shorting opportunity to get um, uh, long on the US dollar what will support the Australian dollar and I think the Australian dollar did have some decent news this week but um, and you know, China came out. There was some um, some decent news out of China as well, and I think that is what was really going to help the Australian dollar to be a buy if China start to grow. But I want to see a bit more um, consistent data out of China for me to want to buy the Australian dollar. And even then, I'm not really going to buy it against the US dollar. It'd be probably against another currency, um, a weaker currency uh, than the dollar. So, but if you do want to be a buyer of the Australian dollar. You're looking at a pullback down into either that zone there or uh, that kind of longer term demand zone down into uh, the, the 63 round numbers somewhere around there uh, and finally gold and so gold um did rally a bit on friday um but again as i said i think I said it from last week or the week before that with the dollar strengthening prices are were likely to you know come to the downside if you believe that the dollar was going to be the buy I'm still not convinced by this. I think possibly actually, um, if the, obviously if the dollar comes out and there, there is a dollar bit of a dollar pullback, then in fact gold could rally a little bit. But if the if the once the um, I think once the uh, the dollar starts to you know um, get its strength back, then I think we probably might head down to the eighteen uh, nineties. But again, that depends upon how hawkish the uh, Federal Reserve are and what they say on the expectation of um, of the dollar and, and, and inflation and data because ultimately, you know, traders are coming out of gold based on, um, you know, bond yields being, uh, you know, basically giving you a 4.5% 4, 4 return. And so, um, and also as well for holding the dollar, you're getting a return, whereas gold, you're not really getting any kind of return, right? And so um, with that, although gold does act as a safe haven, I think um, uh, in the short term anyway, maybe some um, some gold bugs are gonna be a little bit disappointed, but ultimately gold is always a, a long-term play as it acts again, um, as a hedge against uh, inflation. And so, um, you know, gold is pretty much just gonna end up going, um, you know, higher and higher eventually, especially as we head into uh, the economic cycle where, you know, uh, uh, countries are going into a recession, right? So recessions pretty much mean risk off, which then means, you know, more buying of gold. So let's see, but I think in the short term, I think uh, with the dollar uh, uh, still being a buy, um, gold could potentially suffer. But if you are looking to buy gold, pretty much any pullbacks into demand zones are where you're looking for uh, buys. So anyway, there, or I think the 1886 area is going to be quite nice as well as a buy there. Anyways, uh, guys, hope you have a great uh, trading week. Don't forget, I've got another video after this. Um, for you to watch. Hope you again have a great trading week and take care. There's no supportive data for me to want to get long on the New Zealand dollar, but there was something interesting here. And they said the main surprise though is 
yeah, though from a policy perspective was that the RBNZ has signaled that it planned to maintain tight policy for longer as it becomes more evident that the economy is re already in recession to help ensure that inflation falls back to target. The RBNZ expects the economy to continue contracting um, and despite the weak growth outlook, the RBNZ updated its forecast from last week signaling and uh, sorry, last week signaled a higher risk of one more rate hike and that rate cuts aren't likely for about 18 months. So there is a bit of a, a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. But when it comes to rate hikes, typically, typically, you, you, you know, we, we say that rate hikes should appreciate a currency. Yeah. But if they are in a recession, rate hikes will contract the economy even more. Yeah. So although so so the market has to decide whether, you know, they want to buy the New Zealand dollar in the face of the economy going into a deeper recession. And so if the market is looking at it like, OK, well, you know, it could be they could go into a recession, but they're likely to come out of it sooner if they hike rates and get inflation down, then the more then 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 a rate hike may appreciate the currency ever so slightly or maybe a bit more than, you know, uh, we expect. But if the market is more focused on, in fact, the economy and and the fact that it's negative for the economy and it will make the economy go into a, 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 a deeper and longer recession, in fact, rate hikes in that environment may not be so supportive. Yeah, it might actually be a negative. So it doesn't mean that because you hear that they're going to high crates that automatically you want to be a buyer, right? It doesn't mean that. Um, in fact, again, as we know, uh, just explained, it can be actually negative. So if you do, if we do see a rate hike on a New Zealand dollar, don't just automatically start to buy that New Zealand dollar because it could mean, it, you know, you could see a short term pop up but the market is more focused on the recession side of things and it could drive the New Zealand dollar down. Um, Sonny says, Swiss is a mystery, I avoid it. Yeah, I got, I, by the way, I got short on the uh, New Zealand, um, the New Zealand, sorry, the uh, Swiss yen and, and uh, it was really good, it's been a really good trade so far. Uh, New Zealand just don't wanna cut early to ensure interest rates work through the economy, their inflation is still high. Yeah, so they're in a very difficult position, Sonny, a very, very, very difficult position because they've got high inflation, but they're in a recession. So it's like the central bank, in fact, is in a very, very, very difficult position. So even if you wanted to buy the New Zealand dollar based off of interest rate hikes, it's a very difficult buyer because the fact that they're in a recession. Do you know what I mean? So it, I personally would not, I'm not even thinking about buying the, um, the New Zealand dollar. Anyway, I'll just finish this off and then we'll move on. So the recent sharp drop in the Kiwi has attracted the attention of RBNZ's chief economist, Paul Conway, who stated that they will be mindful of the depreciation going forward. He said that recent depreciation reflects a reduction in interest rate differentials and risk aversion. The New Zealand dollar has underperformed this month alongside other commodity related currencies. There has been more focus on the loss of growth momentum in China. RBNZ chief economist Conway stated that if there was a more significant slowdown in China than the RBNZ expects hurting exports and growth, we could lower the OCR sooner than we have signaled, right? Lower the OCR, meaning we actually could cut sooner than they have signaled. Overall, the development should reinforce the Kiwi's recent bearish trend, right? Should reinforce it. So that for me, if I'm, if you're looking at, you know, buying or selling the new the New Zealand dollar like I there's no way in on earth I'm putting my money to buy the New Zealand dollar that just that just can't happen so there's that there's also some other news there so that's with the um, New Zealand dollar done